Allah. So, what is an ism? Well, an ism can be of many things. So, let me give you a list of these. An ism can be a name, a place, an adjective, an adverb, a thing, an idea, a pronoun, and much, 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 much more. So an ism uh, ideally can be all of these things, but it has two qualities that we need to know. It has a meaning within itself and it does not indicate time. So let me give you an example. If I said to you Mecca, Mecca has a meaning within itself. It is a name of a place. So that's the first thing. Second thing is it doesn't indicate time. Mecca doesn't have a past, present or future tense to it. It's uh, timeless. Right? So that is our definition for an ism. The second one is the fi'l. What is a fi'l? Um, a fi'l is a word which has a meaning within itself, but it also has time. So it has a past, a present, and a future tense to it. For example, if I said to you the word kicking, it indicates a meaning within itself, which is an action of the leg. And it also indicates time, kicking which is happening now in the present tense. So whereas the ism doesn't indicate time, the fi'l does. And that is the differentiating line between the two. So an ism has a meaning within itself and it doesn't indicate time. But a fi'l has a meaning within itself and it does indicate time. So that's the definition for our ism and that's the definition for our fi'l. If you understand that these two things, then the harf becomes easier because if you find a word and it doesn't have the qualities of, of an ism and it doesn't have the qualities of a fi'l then it's going to be a harf. Why? Because a harf is a word which has no meaning on its own. It has no meaning when it's on its own, right? It has no meaning whatsoever. For example, if I came up to you and I said to you, A, it means nothing to you, right? It has no meaning. Whereas if I said to you an ism like football, there's meaning to it. Or if I said to you a fi'l, kicking, it has meaning. But if I say a half to you like a, it has no meaning to you. Ah, but here's the point. When does it have meaning? It has meaning when it comes in a context. When a harf comes in a context, then it has meaning. So, that is our definition for our ism, for the fi'l and the harf. And just to point out, these three words are distinct from each other. An ism can never be a fi'l and a fi'l can never be an ism. An ism can never be a harf and a harf can never be an ism. And a fi'l can never be a harf and a harf can never be a fi'l. So these three words are distinct. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the ism first. Why? Because out of the three, the hardest one to understand is the ism. Once we understand the ism, then the rest will become much, much more easier to us, inshallah. So, looking at the ism, the ism can be broken down into three types of words as well. They are the following. Mudhar, Mubham, and Mudmar. Let's understand what these three mean. The Mudhar means an ism which is apparent in its meaning. For example, if I said to you any name of a place or an object or a person or a thing, right, it has an apparent meaning. For example, a ball, table, child, adult, uh, Muhammad, Fatima, house, any of these words, all of these words, they have an apparent meaning, to, meaning right? So they are referred to as isms which are mudhar. What is Mubham? Mubham is an ism which has an ambiguous meaning and it's not clear to us. And they come in two forms. They are known as Ism Mawsool and the Asma'u Al-Ishara. I'm not going to go into detail with these right now. We'll look at them further along as we go uh, in the videos. But as for now, just know that they are of two categories and they are known as Mubham, meaning they are ambiguous words which don't have clear meaning to us. Good. And lastly we have is Mudmar. Mudmar refers to the pronouns. The pronouns. And what is a pronoun? A pronoun is words like he, she, you, them, we, I, these kind of words. Okay? They are known as pronouns. So Looking at it holistically, we said we have the Arabic language is broken down into three types of words, ism, fi'l, harf, and looking at ism, it's broken down into three types which are known as mudhar, mubham, and mudmar. Now, before we go into these three into detail, I need to point out something really, really important. The ism and the fi'l, right? These two types of words, they have some qualities that they share together. And they have some qualities which are distinct and they are 
some which are specifically for ism and some which are specifically for the fi'l in order for you to differentiate between the two what I want to do is just quickly go over some of the qualities that an ism has so from the get-go when you look at the Quran when you look at a hadith and you find a word and it has any of these qualities you will know that this word is definitely an ism so let's look at the four qualities that an ism has uniquely just for the ism and not for the fi'l they are the following the first is the ism can take khaft or jar the second is that the ism can take tanween third is that the ism can take alif lam and fourth is that there are a group of letters known as the haruf or jar and they can come before the ism let's go into them a bit more detail when I say that the ism can take khaft or jar, what does that mean? Very simply, it means that the ism, right, at the end of the word, the last letter can take a kasra. And this is uniquely only for the ism. Why? Because you will never ever ever find a fi'l where the last letter of the fi'l has a kasra. You will never find that. Only an ism will have it. So if you ever come across a word and it has a kasra on the last letter of the word, you will know that this is definitely going to be a ism. That's number one. Number two, the tanween. What is a tanween? Tanween refers to the double accent. For example, the fathatain, the kasratain, and the dhammatain. And the sounds are an, in, and un. These three accents, these tanween, are uniquely for the ism. So if you ever find a word and at the end of the word on the last letter there is a fathatain or a kasratain or a dhammatain, you will know that this word is definitely going to be an ism because it never appears on the fi'l. It is only the ism. Good. Number three is that the ism takes alif lam. The ism takes alif lam at the beginning of the word. So for example, I can say to you, al-masjid, al-masjid. Whenever you find a word and there is an alif lam at the beginning, know that this word is going to be an ism. Why? Because a fi'l can never take alif lam at the beginning. Never ever would it take alif lam at the beginning. This is a unique sign for the ism only. So we said so far that the ism has three unique signs. We said the first is that the ism takes khaft or jar. You could say either one, but it means it takes kasra at the end of the word. Secondly, we said it can take tanween at the end of the word. Thirdly, we said it can take alif lam at the beginning of the word. Fourthly, is that the beginning of an ism, you can have a haruf jar. One of the haruf jar. What are the haruf jar? The haruf jar are a group of haruf uh, which when they come at the beginning of an ism, they make the ism become khaft or jar, meaning they make the ism take a kasra. So for example, you have a harf or jar, and then you have an ism right after it. That ism is going to take a kasra. And that is the fourth unique sign. But in order to recognize it, you need to know what are the haruf or jar, and they are the following. You have ba, ta, kaf, lam, waw. You have min, an, ala, ila, hatta, fi. And there are a few more, but as of now, I want you to stick with these ones for now. So if you have any of these haruf jar and you have an ism after it, that ism will automatically take a kasra. So let's take an example of the harf fi. If we say fi bait, fi bait, the word bait is the ism, right? And the word fi is our harf jar. Now, what did we say happens when you have a harf jar and ism after? We said that the ism takes khaft or jar, meaning it takes kasra. So we will say fi baitin. It will take the kasra here, but here it will be the kasra tain. And inshallah, later on I will explain why it takes kasra tain here and not just a singular kasra. But just know for now that these haruf jar, they will make the ism become khaft or jar. And these are the four unique signs that the ism has. Firstly, that it can become khaft or jar. Secondly, it can take tanween. Thirdly, it can take alif and lam. And fourthly, that it can take the haruf jar at the beginning of the ism. And these are unique signs for 
an ism specifically. So whenever you come across in the Quran and you come across a passage and you find any of these signs on a word, you will automatically this word is definitely going to be a ism. So let's look at a few examples just to draw the idea in our head properly. If I said to you the word Talibun, Talibun. Look at our list of four things that we have, the four unique signs. Can you see any of them in this word Talibun? Well, the word Talibun has a tanween at the end of it. It has a dhammatain. Is tanween one of our unique signs? Yes, it's the second one. Therefore, the word Talibun is a ism because the tanween is uniquely for the ism only. Okay, if I said to you, Fil Masjidi, Fil Masjidi. Two words here. The fi here is our harf jar, and the word al masjidi is the ism. Is there a unique sign here? Yes, there is. The fi is one of the mentioned har haruf jar that I gave to you, and haruf jar is inside our list. It's the fourth unique sign. Why? Because now it's going to make the word al masjidi become khaf jar. And it does because it has a kasra at the end of it. So the haruf jar made the ism become jar. And that is a unique sign for the ism only. So I hope you guys found this lesson very, very easy, right? So we looked at the ism and we broke it down into three types. And then we talked about the unique signs that an ism specifically has. Remember them. And next time you're reading for the Quran, try and pick out and look for these signs.